Father, we come to you on this Lord's Day to once again continue to worship you. We praise you, Lord. We give you the honor and glory that you do. And we just pray, Lord, that you put a hedge around us, keep us all healthy and safe. Just be with all those that need your healing touch and just be with those that need prayers answered, Lord. You know what they are and just uh, bring justice and, and that uh, we know you're the, the, the righteous judge and so that we know that you'll do the right thing. And Father, we just pray that you'll do things quickly, that uh, we in our frail bodies, uh, we just don't have the patience a lot of times to, to wait for, on things, but we know that you always do things on your own time. And Father, we just pray that you'll bless this service, be with each and every one. Just uh, thank you for those that are here and listening online. Continue to be with those pastors and preachers and missionaries out there that are making a stand for your word. Be with those street preachers that are trying to reach the lost and just uh, give them the boldness and courage to do so. And be with those that are willing to hand out tracts and try to win, win souls for you, Lord. You know, there's so many Christians today that are professing Christians, but they never do a thing for you, Lord. And so never even try to even uh, win a soul. And you say that you tell us in your word in Proverbs that he who wins souls is wise. And so, Father, we just pray that this nation would turn from her wickedness and that our leaders would, would turn away from Satan and turn towards you. That this late nation is heading on a wrong path. We, we see that how these people are out there supporting Hamas and, and uh, are anti-Israel and the Jewish people and and we, and we know, Lord, that you say you curse Israel, then we'll be cursed. And that's what, exactly what's happening. We've been seeing this, this weekend tornadoes all across the Midwest and more coming again today. And, Father, we just pray that uh, just the people that are, that are pushing for Hamas, that you'll, you'll punish them, Lord, and, and bring your vengeance upon them. And just to open their eyes to show that they're they're serving Satan rather than you. And so, Father, we just ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to be continuing our study on dinosaurs in Scripture. This will be part eight. Now, we started last week looking at the behemoth. I told you that there was two specific dinosaurs or dragons that are mentioned in Scripture the behemoth and Leviathan. And the uh, behemoth, I said, is a land dinosaur or dragon. And then the uh, Leviathan is a marine dragon or dinosaur. And we're going to, like I said, be looking here at behemoth. We started looking at it. It's in the book of Job. And we saw that. We saw where, remember, Job had all this testing and things going on. And then at the end, God talks to Job out of a whirlwind and kind of tells him, and he starts telling him, you know, tell me, you know, where were you at the foundation of the earth? Where were you at the, the world? You know, and then starts asking him all these questions. Of course, Job's like, you know, I can't answer any of these things. You know, I'm just a mere man. And, you know, he tells Job to look at one of his creations. You know, again, we're showing that, that, that God is the creator. It's not evolution. You know, dinosaurs did not evolve from something. And they didn't turn into birds or something else stupid that, uh, you know, God himself created them, as we saw on day six, the same day as man. And <clears throat> when we saw there, we're looking at Job chapter 40, verses 15 through 24. And we saw where Job's, uh, I mean, uh, God told Job to behold, you know, verse 15, behold now behemoth, which I made with thee, he eateth grass as an ox. And I remember I said that the word behold means to look, you know, so this was a di this was a dinosaur that was still around at the time of Job, you know, which we said was roughly uh, like 3,600 years ago, I think it was, or something like that. And so, um, you know, it wasn't just 66 million years ago that they died out like the secular uh, satanic uh, atheistic scientists try to tell you that, you know, they're so brainwashed and dumb as a brick that yeah about 3622 years ago but you know so and this proves that dinosaurs and man were there together 
you know, the secular scientists try to say that they were never even close to being around the same time. But God told Job, behold, look at this behemoth. Now, <clears throat> you know, why would God tell him to look at something if it wasn't there? And he didn't make all of a sudden, oh, they've been dead for these millions of years, but I'll, I'll create one right here for this moment just so you can see one. You know, because, you know, otherwise Job would be like, whoa, what was that thing? You know, they never seen one in for, you know, obviously he wasn't surprised by this because he had seen these, these uh, behemoths before. Now, <clears throat> I told you that a behemoth is the, is the largest seropod dinosaur that ever lived. And I'm going to show that as we go through it, we'll clearly see that, you know, and I said that the uh, modern corrupt Bibles, counterfeit Bibles, then they'll go around trying to uh, have footnotes that say, you know, there's one of them that says an elephant. Most of them usually say a uh, hippopotamus. Well, we're going to see that neither one of these fit the description for behemoth and are just silly and stupid that, you know, stop buying into this stuff. Just listen to what God says. You know, again, it says they're trying to, they just don't want to admit that dinosaurs and man could be around at the same time. But we clearly see there in verse 15 how that this behemoth ate grass you know he was an herbivore you know which we know that seropods were herbivores then we saw um, well anyway so that we're going to pick it up there we're going to pick it up here in verse 16 so let me read verse 16 again uh, actually i'm just going to go ahead and read the whole passage again just real quick because uh so starting in verse four, chapter, Job chapter 40, verse 15 through 24, verse 15. Behold now, behemoth, which I made with thee, he eateth grass as an ox. See, he made him with thee, you know, it made him at the same time as man. Lo now, his strength is in his loins, and his force is in the navel of his belly. He moveth his tail like a cedar. The sinews of his stones are wrapped together. His bones are as strong pieces of brass. His bones are like bars of iron. He is the chief of the ways of God. He that made him can make his sword to approach unto him. Surely the mountains bring him forth food, where all the beasts of the field play. He lieth under the shady trees in the covert of the reed and fens. The shady trees cover him with their shadow. The willows of the brook compass him about. Behold, he drinketh up a river and hasteth not. He trusteth that he can draw Jordan into his mouth. He taketh it with his eyes. His nose pierces through snares. You know, we're going to see that snares means traps. But <clears throat> So anyway, let's look at uh, verse 16 here. So verse 16 has God saying the strength of the behemoth is in his loins. Let me read verse 16 again. Lo, now his strength is in his loins and his force is in the navel of his belly. You know, of course, the, the navel, that's like, you know, the, the belt, like belly button and everything. But um, so, you know, the, God says that the strength of the behemoth is in his loins. Now, the loins describes the muscles around the lower back and waist area. So around, you know, all your, your lower back and waist area here, this fits. Now, this fits with seropod dinosaurs that had huge back muscles and huge muscles around the waist or hip area. You know, if you were to look at <clears throat> the seropods, you know, they always had these huge um, muscles around, you know, the waist and hip area, just like God describes here. You know, so again, it's like, who, can, who are you going to believe? Are you going to believe God or are you going to believe some atheistic satanic scientist? Now, the verse continues by God saying, Behemoth's force is in the navel of his belly. You know, so his force is, you know, it's, 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 it's here in his belly, the navel of his belly, right by the belly button, you know, down here. You know, remember, they walked on all fours, and, you know, his force is, you know, going to be around there. You know, it take a lot of muscle to, to hold up a body like this and so forth. Now, force means strength, and God is showing his built-in dictionary here. You know, the, as we said, the behemoth had very strong muscles in his belly. Now, this also fits with seropods, whose strength was in the loins and belly, just as God describes here. So we see that this verse clearly fits with the seropod dinosaurs. Now, 
you know, like I said, so, you know, it says here in verse 16, lo, his strength in his loins and his force is in the navel of his belly. You know, strength and force, you know, they mean the same here. The force is the strength, you know, so again, it shows that King James uh, Bible is built in dictionary. Now, in verse 17, we see God says, Behemoth moves his tail like a cedar. Let me read verse 17. He moveth his tail like a cedar. The sinews of his stones are wrapped together. So here, like I said, in verse 17, it says he moves his tail like a cedar. Now, a cedar is a tree that in some types can grow to be as tall as 130 feet tall with a multiple trunk. You know, a cedar, you know, especially some, some of the, you know, the really big ones, like I said, some of them can grow up to 130 feet tall and, you know, they have massive trunks, you know, oftentimes multiple trunks, you know, they'll have more than one trunk. They all kind of like merge together and so forth. And, you know, so it, we're talking a massive tree here. You know, cedar is a very strong wood and the trees have big trunks and, and are strong. You know, so again, you know, if you look at one of these, a picture of these things, you know, they're very strong trees and trunks. You know, the wood is, is uh, it's a strong type of wood. You know, it's not fragile or anything. Now, having a tail moves like a cedar does not fit, you know, that moves, having a tail that moves like cedar tree does not fit the description of an elephant or hippopotamus. They both have very thin tails that do not have much strength or do much damage. You know, the, if you look at a, at a hippopotamus or an elephant, they got this flimsy little tail. It's real skinny. And then it's got a little bit of fur at the end or whatever, like the elephant and stuff. And, you know, they're just little things, you know, and they're not really very strong. I mean, like, you know, if an elephant came along and whipped you with the tail, oh, yeah, I might hurt a little bit. But, I mean, it's not it's it's not really going to do its damage. Its damage is more like, you know, his trunks and, you know, and, um, you know, his legs and, you know, his body and so forth. You know, but, you know, for a big elephant, I mean, it's this huge animal. And then he's got this little dinky little tail that it's not even that long or anything. It doesn't even hit the ground. And it just, it's all a little, little flimsy little thing. And you're like, it doesn't belong on an elephant. You're like, man, it's a big animal. Why has he got this little dinky tail? And, and hippopotamus is the same thing. You know, it's got this little tiny tail, a big, huge animal. You know, a hippopotamus is like the big, fat little porker. It's got little dinky legs. And, you know, it just looks like this overweight little skinny guy. I mean, it's overweight little little midget guy or something, you know, and he just, then, but then the same like with the elephant, he's got this little dinky little tail, you know, it's got, like I said, a little fur and little skinny little thing. Now, does that sound like a tail, like a cedar tree? You know, he moves his tail like a cedar. I mean, you're not going to move that thing around and it's going to be, you know, causing a lot of damage. You know, again, it doesn't even touch the ground or anything. Now, <clears throat> the seropods if you look at their, you know, the pictures and the skeletons and so forth, they had long, huge tails, just as God describes, that if moved back and forth would have done great damage to anyone or anything in its path. They would all have had great strength, just like the cedar tree God describes. You know, they had these huge tails that dragged along the ground. I mean, these things could be, you know, 30 feet or more long or whatever, you know, they were huge. I think some were even longer than that, maybe like 50 or something. I mean, it was a good portion, you know, between the tail and their neck, that, that was a good portion of their length. You know, it's this big, huge, long tail that, you know, just sweep it across. I mean, anything got in its way, you know, big and huge and fat, it was just going to just move it out of the way. You know, you got smacked by one of those things, it could easily kill you. And so, you know, we see the difference there on, you know, the, the strength behind this tail. That tail had a lot of strength that it could easily, you know, that, that's what the seropod would use to defend itself against an enemy. You know, if another dinosaur or something came to attack it, it could take that tail and whip it. And it, you know, it would uh, inflict extreme danger on the animal or kill it or at least, you know, at the very least scare it off. You know, it was very strong type tail. So again, you know, clearly not like the elephant or the hippopotamus like they claim it is. But that's not the only thing that we're going to see that doesn't fit the hip, hippopotamus or elephant. Now, <clears throat> the description alone, not even counting others, God gives shows the footnotes are clearly lies. So I mean, even if I don't go any farther, just that one, this one description clearly does not fit either the hippopotamus or the elephant. So right off the bat, those footnotes are lies. 
you know, again, they're just coming up with something because they don't want to admit the dinosaurs were around with man because it goes against their evolutionary thinking. And, you know, even the secular, you know, the, these people make these corrupt Bibles. They want to push all this evolution and all this other nonsense. That, you know, if you just believe God's word. Now, God then says the sinews of behemoth's stones are wrapped together. Now, the sinews are tendons that attach muscles to bones. You know, that's what the sinews are. They, they, they're the, the tendons that attach muscle to bones. You know, and obviously they had to be uh, strong and everything, to, you know, for all these muscles to be able to move and, and to do so. Now, we know seropods had huge bones, and so they would have had to have large tendons to attach them to the animal's large muscles that we saw earlier described. I mean, we saw that they had, they had these huge muscles all around the, the thigh and the hips and the lower back and, you know, the loins and sets and so forth. You know, if you look, if you ever seen the dinosaur, you know, seropod dinosaurs in, in the museums and stuff, you know, we, we see they had these huge bones. So obviously, you know, for something like that and have that strength with those kind of muscles, you would have to have, you know, large tendons. Or so, I mean, um, the sinews here as well. Now, the stones described here refers to the male seropod's testicles. You know, in, in King James Bible, then it refers to male's testicles as stones. You know, it even talks about how that, um, you know, if a man has had his stones damaged, you know, he wasn't allowed to go into the, to the temple, you know, in the house of God and so forth. And, you know, the tabernacle and so forth, that God doesn't allow damaged goods into his, his uh, you know, and it could be anything. It could have been born a eunuch. They could have been intentionally made a eunuch. It could be whatever reasons that, that they're damaged. And so, um, you know, where these modern corrupt Bibles, they'll go and actually say testicles. But, you know, the King James Bible is a kid-friendly, a child-friendly um, word. You know, God wants it to be used by everybody of all age groups, not just for adults or something. So, you know, even though the testicles might be the correct translation, it is the wrong word because God wants to use child friendly words. So he uses stones, you know, in reference to a man's testicles. But that's what it's describing here. And you know that the, this animal had to have huge testicles, you know, for an animal this size, you know, it had to have um, huge ones. And so the sinews around it, you know, they're all wrapped. It says that they were. Uh, you know, are, are wrapped together. You know, they would have to have these these sinews or would have to be wrapped all around it and everything to, you know, to protect it. Now, in, in verse 18, God describes the bones of behemoth as being like strong pieces of brass and being like bars of iron. Let's read verse 18 again. His bones are as strong pieces of brass. His bones are like bars of iron. So, you know, again, we see that the uh, from this description how the behemoth had very strong bones. You know, again, he would have to have strong bones. You know, the, some of these seropods, the biggest ones, were well over 100 tons, you know, or, you know, well up, you know, the 80 tons and things like that. You know, they were very heavy animals. So, you know, the, the length, some of these things were well over 100 feet long, you know, even other ones, you know, 70, 80, 90 feet long, you know, so they, were, they weren't small animals. So, you know, they had these huge muscles, they would have all these huge bones, and so forth like that. And so, you know, to hold up all this weight, they had to be very strong. You know, again, they were not this little wimpy little bones or something like that. But we know the seropods had to have strong bones in order to hold up the tremendous weight they supported. You know, so again, you know, this description fits very much to what a seropod dinosaur is, that if, you know, if you're just looking at the, the weights of them, the size of them, you know, you look at the bones, go to a museum or something, you see the size of these bones, they're very, they're very big bones. And like I said, they've been very strong, you know, it'd be hard to break some of these leg bones and stuff like that because they have to be able to support all this weight. You know, that's one reason why they, they believe they might have spent a lot of time in the water, which they probably did, which we're going to see here. God does describe some of that. And the ones that I've mentioned that they say, They've seen over in the Congo, they like to stay in the water, you know, because water helps buoyant things. That's why your largest animals are oftentimes found in the water, you know, such as the whales and things like that, because the water helps with support some of that weight. 
you know, you get a big person and you put them in, you know, a pool or something, they're able to, to have that weight supported a lot easier than if they're trying to walk on land. You know, you got a, you know, 500, 1,000 pound person or something, they're trying to do something. You know, it's a lot easier in, in the water. But like I said, so they had, you know, obviously it's just like it describes, they had these huge, huge bones. As I said, seropods could weigh up to around 90 tons, you know, and that's possibly some are even bigger. Now, brass is an alloy made of copper and zinc, and it's very pliable, but it's also very strong, and in fact, it's stronger than iron. Now, iron, as we know, is very strong and is used to secure prison doors or windows with bars. You know, that's often what you would use for something like that. You're trying to keep some, somebody out or somebody in. But God is trying to show with the description of these two metals that the bones of Behemoth were both very strong, but yet did not break easy. So, you know, they had to be strong like this iron, but they also had to be, you know, or like we said that the brass, that it was actually even stronger, that, but it's you know, a lot more pliable than the iron. So, you know, you'd have to be strong because to be able to move all this, you know, the thing is the bones also have to be able to, you know, they have to, the body has to be able to move. So it's not, you know, it's not like just sitting here and I just stand here and never move, you know, it, it, it the, everything has to be able to, to now while your bones, you know, it's got the joints, so the bone itself, like say your arm here, don't necessarily move. It's more that the joint, but everything still has to all work together, you know, so it has to, so they have to be very strong, but they also have to be somewhat flexible. I mean, you can't have this animal all of a sudden, you know, falls down or something and oh, just breaks the leg, you know, that easy. I mean, it has to be able to support all this weight, but yet not break real easy. Now they needed to be flexible for the weight they supported as this large animal moved. Now baleen whales are very large, but as I said well ago, they have water to help support them, whereas seropods like behemoth did not. And as I said, this is why seropods were often around water, such as marshes or rivers, as we will soon see soon. Now these bone descriptions do not describe an elephant or a hippopotamus. You know, it's clearly these are not the same, you know, that, that those, this description does not describe anything close to being an elephant or a uh, hippopotamus. But like I said, even though they would spend time in the water, they were still oftentimes, they were still land dinosaurs of dragons. You know, they weren't like the uh, Leviathan that we're going to see. So, you know, it had to have these strong bones in order to support all this weight as it moved along the ground. You know, there was the, the brontosaurus, which both have been renamed the patasaurus, but then now some say it was still the same animal again, and whatever. I'm not going to get into the dispute over that, but the name brontosaurus meant thunder lizard. You know, remember dinosaurs, that's what they are. They're, they're, they're terrible lizards. You know, we see the connection. We've seen that with the dragons. That, But it, it, meant, it, said it was called thunder liz, uh, lizard, and, it, and it's not even the largest seropod out there that's been several, you know, numerous ones discovered since then are even much bigger. But it's, the point was, is that they were, you know, their weight, when they were moving, you know, something that big moving on land, I mean, it probably did kind of shake the earth a little bit, you know, moving and, and so forth. You know, it's not, I mean, even an elephant, like if the herd of them started running, but these are much bigger than even like an elephant. Now let's take a look at verse 19 here. Verse 19 says, he is the chief of the ways of God. He that made him can make his sword to approach unto him. So verse 19 shows that Behemoth was the chief of the ways of God. Now this phrase shows that Behemoth was the largest land animal that ever lived and therefore the largest seropod dinosaur that ever lived. You know, that's what chief of the ways means. It means it's the top dog. It's the it's the, the the largest animal that God ever created, you know, land animal that God ever created. He's the chief of the ways. You know, if you're the chief, you're the you're the top, you're the head, you're the leader, you're the head honcho. You know, that it's the now we know that the largest land animals that ever lived were seropod dinosaurs. So whichever the largest seropod dinosaur was, which they keep discovering different things, so we can't really say for sure that you know that was this particular dinosaur because they may find another one that's larger, or and there's disputes over the 
bones because sometimes they only find partial skeleton and so forth. But whatever that was, that is who Behemoth was. So as I said, there is debate over what the largest seropod dinosaur, you know, what was the largest seropod dinosaur. You know, some say it's Argentinosaurus at 115 feet long and 88 tons. There's another one's called Titanosaurus. Uh, I don't know, there's these different ones, but like I said, there's disputes over them. But the point is, you know, these were not small animals. And the largest, as I said, may not have even been found yet. Now, most have only been found as incomplete skeletons, so it is possible that there are larger ones yet. So whichever it was, you know, whichever one you want to go with the uh, Titansaurus, the Argentinosaurus, or there was another one called Superstaurus, and, you know, all these other ones that, you know, as I said, they come up with there's d disputes over whether, you know, this was the same animals and all that kind of stuff. But whichever seropod they ever find that's the largest one, that's who Behemoth was. You know, so it was, whichever it was, it was the largest land animal that God ever created and possibly the largest of any animal, even beyond the great whales. You know, so it's possible that, you know, when he's using chief of the weights, he's not even just referring to just simply land animals. He might be sim simply referring to any animal he ever created, that he's the chief of the weights. He's the, you know, he's the biggest one. So it could be theoretically even bigger than right now, the blue whale is the largest whale that we ever know or animal that we believe ever existed but it's possible that we have, there was a seropod that we don't know about that was even bigger so you know whether it's just referring to the land animals or or to every animal that's ever existed but at, at the very least it's definitely the land animals here now the description of a hippopotamus does not fit as the elephant even today is larger and we know the elephant is not the largest land animal ever, so it too is wrong. You know, so even just with the animals we have today, an elephant is the largest land animal we have today. So it obviously, you know, it's even bigger than hippopotamus. So the hippopotamus can't be the chief of the waves because it's not even the biggest animal even alive today. And then we know from the skeletons, we know that many dinosaurs were much bigger than an elephant. We know that there was other animals that were much bigger I mean, even among the elephant, there was other kinds of elephants, the, the mammoths and, and so forth, the mastodons that were bigger than the current elephants we have today. You know, there was extinct rhinoceros. There was another, <coughs> another animal, I don't remember what it was called, but it was this weird animal, but it was, they were bigger than the elephant, you know. So we know there's many extinct animals that were much bigger than the elephant. So, you know, both of them are clearly not chief of the ways, you know, so, you know, it just doesn't, again, proves that they're wrong, you know, that the translators are wrong. So if the Bible translators were honest, God-fearing men who truly believe God's word, then they would know Behemoth was not an elephant or a hippopotamus, but had to be a seropod, which is the only animal that fits all of the description given for Behemoth. So, you know, we'll finish looking at this next week, but just up to what we've seen so far, then the whole description here, it fits nothing other than a seropod dinosaur. Seropods were the chief of the ways. They had the huge loin muscles. They had all the, you know, the bones that were super strong, had the tail like a cedar tree that, that uh, could cause the severe damage. You know, all these things where elephant and hippopotamus don't even come close to fit in either one of them. And as I said, most people say it's the hippopotamus. They don't even say it's the elephant. I mean, it's actually Roman Catholic Bible that says elephant. So... You know, it's even more damage against the hippopotamus than there is for the elephant. So, you know, again, it just shows that the translators are not honest. You know, number one, they always want to put these footnotes in, in, in Bibles to try to cast doubt on things, try to push their agenda rather than give the truth of what God says. You know, they, they uh, you know, they can talk all their smack all they want. Oh, they're Christians, this, that. But, you know, a lot of them, I don't believe, are even Christians. And then... The other ones are just under the influence of Satan. You know, they're not they're not uh, obeying God's word. Because if they were, they would already know that the King James Bible, God has already given us His perfect word in the King James Bible. So we would not need to be wasting our time doing another translation. But you also you don't place footnotes above God's word, and it's just their own description. I mean, they're they're making God look silly and say, 
oh, well, God doesn't know what he's talking about. You know, he's he's really talking about a hippopotamus here. You know, and if they really truly believe that, why don't they just change behemoth to hippopotamus, you know, or something like that. I've seen that where, um, you know, we're going to see the unicorn later on where one Bible actually translates it as rhinoceros. Now, I do believe it was a super type of rhinoceros that doesn't exist anymore. We'll get into that some other time. But that's still not the right choice of a word, but at least... If you truly believe that, then make it those. I mean, it's not like they don't change words all the time. So, you know, make it instead of behemoth, just say, well, this was the Argentinosaurus or, you know, whatever. But they don't want to say that because, again, they're trying to make it not like it's a dinosaur because that doesn't fit their agenda of dinosaurs and man being around together. So we're going to pick it up in verse 20 next week. But just uh, keep in mind, you know, the dishonesty of the Bible translators and how you know, they push the agenda of evolution and doubt, you know, of, you know, again, that like dragons were not real creatures and that type of stuff. So, but, you know, you read this thing over yourself again and you'll clearly see that Job is describing a seropod dinosaur here and not a hippopotamus. But let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this time you've given us here to study your word and we thank you, Lord, for what you do for us each and every day. We pray for the upcoming service. Pray that you be with each and every one. Just give us a blessed day and just keep us all safe. Everyone that's in the path of the uh, potential tornadoes and so forth and just look after us and just be with those Christians that are in bonds and just look after Israel, continue to be with them and bring them safety and allow them to quickly defeat their enemy and to to just open up the eyes of those that hate israel and and let them see that they're just serving none other than satan himself when they want to go on the attack and so father we just pray that you again be with your servant and be with each and every one and we ask all these things in jesus name amen